Well, good morning. My name's Noldy, and it's my pleasure to talk to you today um, from this farm, Ballyburg Farm, here in Tipahu. I'm here with Bernard Kelly, who's uh, running the farm and, uh, and the owner of uh, Ballyburg Farms. And we've also got Jen Corcoran here from Baron Brug Seeds. So today we're going to talk about grasses, pasture maintenance, looking after new grass, weeds, all sorts of things like that, because um, we spend a lot of money on, on grasses. Grass is our biggest asset, and yet we, you know, and yet often we don't get the best out of it. So we just want to make sure that we look after it, and and put the best practice in place to make sure it lasts for us and gives us the return that we need. So, when do you aim to plant it? I mean, yeah. ideally, when, when do you think you should plant it ideally? Because it, end, end of March. End of March, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, sometime between the middle of the end of March, yeah. yeah. Because then you can get that nip-off grazing sometime late April. Yeah. Yeah. And then get it grazed before end of May, is that right? Yeah. That's what I used to do, but... Yeah, yeah. definitely. Try and get two grazings in before there's extreme weather events. Yeah. The idea is to get that nip-off grazing, that first grazing, so two grazings essentially in before yeah. that winter period arrives. Now, what winter is or when, yeah, yeah, yeah. when it starts is, is yeah. it can be anything, yeah. Yeah. but what we can control is hopefully our planting date being yeah. early enough. Now, we always end up with horrific events like last autumn I don't think it rained until the end of May so you know the early so and stuff struggled in the dry but hopefully in a normal year um, aiming for that you know end of March mm. sort of period in this in this mm. Waikato environment anyway mm. uh, but from mid you know from 10th mid March onwards is really good the later we go not necessarily gonna affect the plants establishing but it's gonna affect our chances of getting onto that paddock yeah, to yeah. get those nip offs yeah. done and the yeah. pasture yeah. thickening up in time yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah. that's perfect. So this paddock was three years in maize yeah, and then annual? Near's annual. Yeah. So the other thing we often do see is we can look to the history of the paddock to figure out what's going on with persistence. And we know there's certain crops or, or cultivation methods that can be hard dirt on the soil and the soil structure. In which case we've just got to be even more careful with the paddock going forward, okay? So there's quite a lot that comes into play. Minimum tillage or not disturbing the soil as much as we can it's not always possible, but with small seed forage crops it can be, is good. Um, and that can help with the soil structure side of things as well. Um, on the lighter ashes and pumices, any disturbance of the soil can affect future persistence of ryegrass pastures. We definitely know that much, so. Oh cool, yeah. so that leads me to, I was gonna ask you about, so you just answered that question without me even asking it, which is great, and that was about, <laughs> um, we used to do a lot of grass to grass to spray out yep. and do that. So, and that's not disturbing the soil. And you're saying that's really good. So, if you want to regrass, or that's versus just under sowing, chucking seeds in there, yeah. under sowing, and um, yeah. So, spray it out, put new grass in, or under sow with an annual, and then put it through a crop, or just um, or just under sow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good um, question. And the, the thing with under sowing was, you see a great result, but then the other grasses just choke it out and you waste all your money. Is that correct or not? Yeah. Um, In your opinion? Yeah, great question. Are you doing any under sowing at all here, Bernard? No. No. Yeah. So under sowing is a great tool. Um, and let's talk about under sowing as in, you weren't going to do anything with this paddock, but yeah, it's opened it's just up a bit. Opened up. Yeah. 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 So the, the thing that under sowing requires is open bare ground. So if we've got a paddock that's ryegrass has run out, but it's been a hot wet summer like this year and it's full mm. of summer grass if the summer grass hasn't died yet or there's a thatch of weeds or anything yeah. there there's no point under sowing in because it needs big ground to yeah. successfully yeah. establish so yeah. under sowing can be a very very good tool if we do it right we don't disturb you know the soil too yeah. much it can be yeah. cheap more cheaply done than a full renewal yeah. however you'll be throwing your money down the drain if you haven't got big ground yeah. to, to stitch into and nice and shallow too so I'm a big fan of undersowing, but I would be walking that paddock and making sure there's enough bare ground bare that ground. you're going to get that good establishment. Okay. Um, and whether you stitch in or you, you know, your biff seed Chuck on top, of heavy on top. harrow, yep. yeah, heavy harrow, Cambridge roll. Remember, yep. seed loves a, a big hug, so it's just giving it that hug so that it whoosh, comes out of the also ground. Also, broadcast it in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. Can do that, yeah. Yep. Yep. But heavy harrows or something just to bash yep. it close yep. to the ground is yep. good too. So, so yeah, undersowing can be really good, and you know, you can add two or three ton. Yeah. of dry yeah. matter to yeah. that paddock yeah. over the next 12 months, yeah. which is profitable. Okay. So how do you graze that paddock after it's been on yeah. the whenever you've got longer perennial yeah. grass yeah. as opposed to the new germinated Good grass? Que great question actually. So, uh, yeah, the big thing is, obviously you've got a paddock, say, coming out of a drought like normal, or a dry time, that looks like there's nothing in it. The minute you undersow it, the rain comes in, boom, all those plants recover. 
essentially uh, the idea uh, with your question is get in there and nip off all of those recovering existing plants yes. after say three or four weeks to allow light down to those newly establishing undersigned plants. So that's what you need to do. You can almost call that the nip off. Then another three or four weeks later you'll be into the paddock as per normal. And you don't need to treat the undersigned paddock quite as carefully but I would be recognising to all members of staff on the farm that this was an undersigned paddock. So let's just treat it a little bit closer to so, the new So you don't go in there and try and eat the big stuff before they can actually eat the little stuff. You've yeah. got to wait till no, the, yeah. the new stuff. So yeah, essentially you do want to, if, if you've got this recovery of the existing plants. Well, that's what, that's often the case. Eh? Yeah, you yeah, do yeah, actually yeah. want to get the animals in. And you won't leave them maybe overnight, just for an afternoon or a morning oh, okay. yeah. to take the bulk out of that paddock okay. because they won't do too much, as long as it's not raining, they won't do too much damage to those newly establishing seedlings, which will be sort of like this size by then, yep. about three yep. weeks old. Uh, and then you, you get back in. Because if you get this, yep. these recovering plants, umbrellas, yeah. you yeah, can say goodbye show. to these guys yes. within 10 days. So you yep. put them in there, but only long enough so they graze all the established stuff. Yeah, just so they won't get light into that. Yeah. Back in. okay. yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. the perfect yeah. idea. Yeah, exactly. And then after you're almost, you know, the good thing about under sowing is there's not really any opportunity cost lost. Yeah. You're essentially yeah. going to go in with the under sower either yeah. the day before or preferably the day of the animals coming out of the paddock. Uh, and then yeah. three weeks later yeah. you're in for that nip. Yeah. Another yeah. three weeks later you've got a yeah. full grazing again and you're away. And it's hopefully filled in the gaps. The idea of under sowing, grow more grass, stop weeds germinating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise fill in those gaps. Fill in with weeds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So only under so with the legs of fast growing annual. Um, or would you do it with perennial? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, another good question. So perennial is slower to establish than annual. So the longer something's meant to stick around for, the the slower it is jumps out of bed basically. So annuals, rock stars, they're only there for a good time, but not for a long time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, they yeah, leap yeah, out of the ground. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, you know, under sowing with those can be good. It just depends because they're not going to have end of fight and then those annuals are not going to kick on into the summer period. So if that paddock's earmarked for crop and you just want to top it up for the, for the winter, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But otherwise you want to use hybrid ryegrass with an end of fight, hopefully, if you want to get another two or three years. Yes. You can use perennial, but remember it's going to be slow to establish. So yeah. There's more chance of yeah. things going wrong. I don't personally see much success with under sowing with perennials. Okay, so Unless just... it's a very open paddock. Okay. Or it has been, it's, it's, it's almost like a grass to grass and you've yeah, done a yeah, light yeah. life seed. Okay, oh, so we're just talking annuals here. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. So okay. I would use hybrid as my number one choice, hybrid ryegrass with an endophyte. Um, if it's going into something else in spring, either Italian or annual is perfect. And that will grow more too, yeah. So we're only under sowing if we're going to, because it's only going to last till Christmas. Yeah. So we're only under sowing if we're going to put a crop in. Yeah, with Otherwise. an annual or an Italian. Yeah. If you want to go another two, three years, yeah. there's a good range of hybrids on the market now that'll give you... Oh, like that last yeah, one. Yeah, yeah okay. like forward. But or... not your, not your, what we used here. We wouldn't do it with that. People do, but you've it's, just got to be quite, yeah. you've got to have quite an open paddock yeah, and then yeah. treat it more like a new Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, 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 and yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Okay, yeah. Um, did you have any more questions around the whole... DAP, whatever we saw uh, in your grass. Yeah. DAP. We yeah. didn't do it here. Oh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Too scared of nitrate poisoning. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, fair. We've had a couple of bad years for that. Yeah. So, DAP works in the fact that it puts phosphorus right next to yeah. the establishing yeah. root, and that root development requires phosphorus to, to do well. So, we, we've got a strip where you've put DAP down with the seed, and a strip where you haven't, you'll notice that plant's establishing a lot quicker. Mm. Now, whether you use it or not um, is okay, it can be, it can be a, a cost. But it will help the speed of establishment and, and that root development. So we usually recommend it, especially with under sowing, yeah, because you want to get sense. those plants yeah, up yeah, and down. Yeah. Whether or not you want to use it with your permanent pasture is up to you. In a direct drilling situation, it's really good if the, if the contractor's got a separate seed box where the DAP goes yeah, down with yeah, the seed. Yeah. Then you get it where you need it to be. If you're putting it just on a full paddock and then sort of air seeding it, you're not necessarily going to get the same benefit. You have to go for a high rate of DAP. Yeah, just to get it so to it's all about that root development. And it does help that speed of establishment. So if you're really, if you know, if you're a little bit late or you're worried, it, it can be a good tool to use to get things going. Um, 
in the ideal world you would use it yes. every time um, and it's not to say you don't have good phosphorus levels on your farm I'm sure you do it's just getting that phosphorus where the plant needs it, needs it. and you don't need a high rate because you're getting it right next to it so that's where it works well uh, but the other thing we haven't talked about probably enough is, is, is fertility as well so knowing where you're at with the fertility of a paddock will help you get a good result and when you've been through something like maize it's something you're going to want to re-check really on because maize and you know you'll get your you'll get your fertilizer recommendations just remembering like it does take a lot from the soil because it's just grown a lot and you've done three years in here so just keeping an eye on that fertility uh, so are you suggesting so okay so a soil test in spring to see where we're at compared to the rest of them or just making sure we feed it more regularly ad hoc or yeah it's good to know where you stand so yeah. actually getting soil tests done and talking to your local food yeah. people just to find out yeah. what the best sort of program is there yeah. Yeah. Uh, i just a, again like we recommend often there's enough recommended for the crop itself but not for what's coming in after the crop yeah, yeah right yeah yeah <laughs> you know and point I mean? to spend all this money on this new grass yeah and doing everything right yeah but it's hungry yeah so, yeah, yeah okay. and you know you, you can tell a lot from the clover content in a yeah. pasture and, yeah. and not just in your new grasses but all across the farm so if mm. the clover is struggling or there's something going on it's often fertility so clover is the canary in the mine when it comes to, to fertility on farm so if you've got good clover content and things are looking good it's nice and even you can get a bit of a feeling but yeah, honestly yeah. testing is yeah. having a bit of an annual yeah. testing program is, is we is do that anyway gold. so yeah. you wouldn't suggest do it in like now or in spring yeah. for this paddock or uh to, I, I mean did you put so what was your what was we, this we soil test it before yeah. we put, put it into maize yeah last so three around. oh last i did just to, um yeah. october yeah yeah cool and then we applied an off for to the yeah for maintenance the yeah. for the yeah. maize crop yeah just so that we wouldn't have a depleted paddock by the time yeah. so we come out evens yeah. at the end nice the, yeah. We had enough for it with the maize crop to mm -hmm. grow it, yeah. and then we were sort of yeah. back even to what we would have been yeah. the previous cool. September. Perfect. And that's ideal, you know, and there's a lot of that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Not every year anyway. It might happen two years ago and then, oh, we didn't actually do it. Yeah. So it, knowing where you stand is, is worth gold, mm -hmm. and it's easier to fix a problem mm -hmm. as you go than realise that you've gone a little bit too far down the road and you've got to go back. So. Good.